Each year, more than 12 million cosmetic procedures are performed. And while most people are thrilled with their transformation, today we're going to bring you the stories of patients whose pursuit for perfection fell flat. Plastic surgery horrors and how to avoid them, next on Ask Dr. Manny. Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought, I wish I could change this or that? If you have, you're not alone. In 2008, Americans spent a mind-boggling $10.3 billion getting nipped and tucked. But as you're about to see, plastic surgery doesn't always go the way it should. Just ask these two women. I can't live like this. I'm like, this is like, I look like a freak. People were always nice and said it didn't look terrible. It looked terrible. These women have never met, but they share the pain of botched plastic surgeries. After a car accident, then 18-year-old Brene Brenner went under the knife to repair her nose. For the next 30 years, she was unhappy with her decision. Judy Crepin lost 140 pounds, and her quest for a better shape led her on a journey that ended with severely deformed breasts. My right breast is almost three and a half inches lower than my left breast. I said the left breast is up on the left hand side I said and the side of it is shaped like a football and it's hanging underneath of my left arm multiple surgical fixes left Judy's body mutilated her original surgery in 2001 was revised because her implants were too small and when they were replaced they were too large after those three surgeries she had at least four more to repair the damage including busted stitches and infections the financial cost over $30,000 and at one point she lived without implants while her tissues healed for about four and a half months I went without a right breast so I had to use gauze and padding and I had to try to make everything contour and it was really difficult Judy searched for doctors with the ability to make her look human again but no doctors would help her something 48 year old Brene Brenner identify with I did check out a few surgeons in the city, but the ones that didn't want ridiculous money didn't even want to touch it because they said it had been too damaged. So I kind of figured this was my lot in life. After her initial surgery in 1979, Renee's nose was never the same and got worse over the years. Imagine having to wake up every day and look at that in the mirror and or if somebody's taking photos of you, cringing every time you looked at a photo of yourself. So I started taking myself out of photos. Her nose haunted her, especially as she planned her wedding. The thought of immortalizing her imperfection in a wedding album made her sick, and she almost didn't get married. Eventually, she hired a makeup artist. It was amazing. I didn't care what she was going to charge me. I, she had to be there, and she was there the entire time during all the photographs, every two seconds touching it up, touching it up with a specific makeup. Renee had dodged one bullet. But history would repeat itself after she and her husband started a family and their son was of bar mitzvah age. I didn't want a makeup artist. I wanted it all better. I was tired of this. I had two other children coming behind him and I knew this was going to be and then they were going to get married and, you know, I just hoped maybe I could find somebody now. And this time around, she found a surgeon who would help her. How are you feeling? How are you? I'm doing good. Dr. Sam Risk took on Brene's case. I took Banks rib, which is rib that's been processed with, um, you know, approved methods, and um, we used that cartilage to correct multiple areas of collapse in her nose to make her breathe better, and also to make her nose look straighter, more defined, and to correct the saddle ski sloped nose that she had. I had the bar mitzvah, I took pictures, I took hundreds of pictures of me. <laughs> My husband made fun of me because um, I was the photographer. I told him to take a lot of pictures of me, and I said I was making up for lost time. Now I just I look in the mirror and I wonder, I'm like, what beautiful nose? Because it's to, for me, it's perfect. I think I might take this dress in case we go out. Judy Crepin also wanted perfection, 
but came to terms with her disfigured body and thought this was as good as it was going to get. Then she met Dr. Tracy Pfeiffer. Hi, Dr. Pfeiffer. How are you today? Good. It's nice Good. to see you. Come you on. too. Oh, Judy's case was by far the most severe case that I've ever seen. She had really significant asymmetries. Her tissues had been damaged from multiple surgeries, plus her tissue had been stretched out from having large implants in for a long period of time. She had scar tissue from her previous uh, surgeries. Dr. Pfeiffer gave Judy much smaller implants, but they provided a big boost to her self-esteem. I felt like a human being again. I wasn't afraid to put on a bathing suit top. I wasn't afraid to wear a strapless dress. You know, my life had totally turned around 100%. Happy endings, but not everyone is so lucky. Some butch plastic surgery is beyond repair, leaving patients disfigured for life. So it's important to do your homework before electing to have surgery. Here's my checklist, pay attention. It sounds basic, but make sure your surgeon is board certified. If you're having facial surgery, your doctor should also belong to the otolaryngology board. Check with your state's medical board to see if the doctor has any medical malpractices and to confirm that he or she has a license to practice medicine. Make sure the doctor has privileges to perform that procedure in a hospital. If they don't, that is a safety issue. Also ask other doctors and patients for referrals and make it a priority to talk to patients who underwent similar procedures to the one you're looking into. Coming up, more questions you should ask yourself to make sure you're ready mentally for that change.